Good morning and welcome as we gather together on another beautiful day in late April. The, uh, the actual date is Wednesday the 29th of April and Paul and I are here with you once again. I wish, folks, I could say that maybe as soon as next week or the week after that we might be able to do something different. Please know that we will be waiting, as will so many others, uh, to hear the words from our governor about uh, any uh, easing of the restrictions that are going to take place. And as soon as we hear more, as soon as we know more, we will get back to you and we will hopefully be able to begin the process of coming back together. Please know it's going to be different. It's going to be a new normal, and that's kind of the statement that a lot of folks have been using, that there may be a new normal for a while with respect to how we do worship. But please keep your eyes and ears peeled for that, and we hope that it will be very, very soon. Just a word about this Sunday. This Sunday is a Sunday, and I'm not going to talk about second, third, fourth, Sundays after Easter. This is a special Sunday because it's a Sunday that most have come to know as Good Shepherd Sunday. Our gospel text as well as our psalm, which is the 23rd Psalm, will talk about that amazing imagery that Jesus used more than anything else to talk about the relationship between our Lord and us. So please uh, join us on this um, remarkable day, this Good Shepherd Sunday. You'll hear me tell the, the kids a little bit about this, but I've always thought that it would be so much fun to bring a live sheep into worship. However, I also know that that could be quite bad if I did so. You got that one. You got that one. <laughs> and that, uh, and, and that there are sometimes there are consequences when you do that. So uh, um, you'll see the only sheep that's in here is a little statue one that I'll show the kids in just a minute. But welcome as we gather together on this Sunday, Good Shepherd Sunday. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please take, at this time, a moment to confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey kids, good morning, and welcome as we gather together again. Unfortunately, not in person, but still via television, via computer, via iPad, via telephone, via whatever way you're watching me right now. Good morning and welcome as we gather together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What do you think of my friend? He's, uh, he's, he's very nice. He's very cuddly. He... Uh, is not real. <laughs> He's actually kind of a statue type thing. But I wanted to bring him out to you this morning because today is a very special Sunday. Today is a Sunday that most pastors have often referred to as Good Shepherd Sunday. What you're going to be hearing is not only in the scripture passages, but in my message and in many other ways, the fact that this is a Sunday where we remember that incredible imagery that Jesus shows to us, that he is the good shepherd and we are the sheep. Now, I have often wanted to bring a baby lamb, a real one, into church. Wouldn't that be cool if we did that one time? However, it has been said many, many times that whenever you bring a live animal into church, it is not a question of if, it's a question of when. And I'll maybe even talk about that a little bit more too. So we're going to have to get by with just this guy here for today. Please know that uh, my thoughts and my heart is with you. Guys and gals, uh, please know that I can't wait again. So you're back here again. But let's celebrate this Sunday, this Sunday we call Good Shepherd's Sunday. Take care, kids. Have a great day. Bye. The Holy Gospel for this Sunday, Good Shepherd's Sunday, comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but his disciples did not understand what he was telling them. 
Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand, and he cares nothing for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. Here ends the Gospel reading. One more reading for this Sunday comes to us from the 23rd Psalm. A psalm of David. The psalmist writes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please bow your hands in prayer. Gracious God, once again on this beautiful day that you have blessed us with here on the western prairie of Minnesota, we are gathered apart, but yet together. We are your flock. O oh Lord, you are our shepherd. Be with us, O oh Lord, this day and each and every day that you tend for us, that you tend to us, that you are watching over us by night and by day. Be with us, O oh Lord, for we are your sheep. Amen. Friends of Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It is with very little argument. Perhaps the most recognizable piece of Scripture in all of the Bible. This incredible 23rd Psalm of David. It is one of those scripture pieces that when you begin to hear the words, you can actually put your Bible down and you can say them together. They are words that, for those of different generations, 
you heard probably first in a language other than English. They are words of hope, they are words of comfort. They are words that, in all my years of ministry, I don't know if I have ever not used them. Either at a funeral service or meeting with the family of a loved one who has passed away. They are powerful words. And what has always been so incredible for me, one who grew up on a farm, is to smile and know that perhaps the greatest words that have ever been placed in God's book were written by a farm kid. Because that's what David was. Yes, he was the king of Israel, but before that he was a farm kid. He was a shepherd. One who tended sheep. This psalm is filled filled with all the incredible ways that a shepherd takes care of his sheep. From the time that the shepherd begins the annual journey and trek with the sheep, the shepherd cares for every aspect of that animal. The words, he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. The shepherd makes sure that where the sheep come to lie down, where the sheep rest, there is clean water. There is ample food. He leads his sheep the right way. He leads his sheep even in the darkest valleys when the shepherd brings his sheep home out of the mountains. Through those dark valleys, those valleys of the shadow of death, the sheep uses, or the shepherd uses his rod and his staff for comfort, for protection. He prepares a place for his sheep. He goes up and finds the perfect plateau to bring the sheep up so that they can graze all summer long in the beautiful fields. He watches for animals. He even goes down to the water and picks up little sharp pieces of rock that might hurt the feet of the sheep. comforts them. He anoints them with oil during the fly season, the season when the bugs are just incredible. He will make up his own special brew, and he will cover the sheep's head and nose area to keep it safe. He does all of these things because he is the shepherd, and he loves his sheep. My words to you this morning come from verse 6. And because it is at the end of this amazing psalm, it's probably one that we maybe skip over just a little bit. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, all the days of my life. A few things about that verse. And they come from an amazing source. A gentleman by the name of Philip Keller wrote years ago an incredible little book entitled A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. Philip Keller was a shepherd, a sheep rancher in Africa. And he tells about how one who has actually been a shepherd looks at this 23rd Psalm in a very different way. 
Here's a few things that he had to say about those words, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And he does it only in the way that someone who is a sheep farmer can do it. Because he talks about how sheep will always, always share goodness and mercy wherever they go. Now here's how he does it, and because I grew up on a farm, and many of you have grown up on a farm, you're going to understand this. And I'll say it in as pleasant a way as I can. Did you know that the manure from sheep is considered probably the finest manure of any domesticated livestock? Because the food that they eat, the grass and the weeds and everything else that they eat mixes together so well that their manure is coveted. In fact, it has been said that you can bring sheep up to some rough and some just poor, poor land and within a couple of years, as you graze them there, because of the manure, because of the weeds that they love to eat, in fact, one of the greatest weeds that they love to eat is the Canadian thistle. They simply love those purple flowers on top. But after just a few years, they will turn rough, almost terrible looking land into an amazing oasis. Philip Keller talks about the fact that wherever they go, they leave something behind. But what they leave behind is beautiful and is new and is remembered. In fact, in ancient times, Sheep were called the ones with the golden hooves because they were so highly thought of as animals because of what they left behind. Okay, I think I'm going to get off that part of the sheep right now and what they left behind and talk a little bit about us. I think this COVID-19 crisis that we are enduring has left a lot of folks to do some rethinking, to perhaps do some thinking about their own lives and about things that we leave behind. I'll never forget when I turned 25, a good friend of mine, from high school, was one of the uh, individuals with for my birthday party. And he looked at me when we were having all our festivities and everyone was having fun. And he said, you realize that you have now been on this planet for a quarter of a century? What have you accomplished? I thought, geez, thanks a lot. But I think as a result of some of the things that have taken place in such a short period of time, I think I and many others have started to think a little bit, perhaps about our own legacy. God gives us all these incredible things. God leads us through our entire life. And he tells us that surely goodness and mercy will follow us for all the rest of our lives. But don't we leave something as well? Shouldn't there be something that we leave behind? And shouldn't it be good? 
I don't know that any of us have ever thought about our relationship to God and what God wants us to leave behind. For about half of my ministry, I have been involved in intentional interim ministry, going in to congregations that many times are steeped in conflict or in controversy. Going into some difficult situations. Situations where I wasn't even sure what I was supposed to do. But situations were following, I thank God, that I was allowed to walk with so many people during such difficult times and to hopefully leave something behind that when I left, they could smile and they could say, you know what? He was okay. To me, that meant everything. Everything. God gives us so much that we need to give something back in return. What God wants from us, what God wants us to leave behind are the things that someone whose heart is filled with Christ, will leave. Not for any power or gain or anything else, but just because that's what a Christian does. We leave good things behind. We have been given goodness Mercy from God. We leave goodness and mercy for others. As we walk our own paths, think about what we leave behind. Ask God to help leave the things behind that would make others smile. And that others would know that you were a Christian. My thoughts and my prayers are with all of us in these days. Thank you for all you have done here in this place. Continue to pray because we will see one another again soon here. We might be a little bit further apart, which, as I think about it, to, to Norwegians should be okay because we're not ones that really like close company anyway. So we hope that in the very near future, we will fill this sanctuary and probably have to fill the narthex in that too to keep our social distancing. And we will work on leaving only good things behind. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
please rise. And if you're sitting in your easy chair, you can rise. Please rise as together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We accept our offering at this time, and that's what we would normally do. And uh, Paul's going to put in a special little piece about how, uh, how your contributions um, can be received here at Christ Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worship is ended. Go in peace. Amen.